welcome to the HMR Mobile Tech channel. So I just got a 2004 Dodge Ram 1500 towed to my garage for a crank no start. And I'm going to diagnose it today and I'm going to walk you through this whole process. So this might be a long-winded video, but you're going to learn a lot and you're going to be better at diagnosing these types of things by, I guarantee you, by the end of it. So I want to know how you do it, but I'm going to show you how I do it. So let's get started. I'm working on a 2004 Dodge Ram 1500 with 5.7 liter and it was towed to my shop th just this morning with a complaint of crank no start. Now the first thing that I noticed is it had an aftermarket car alarm and those give me cause for concern for any types of a, a crank no start or a just, just a full on no start, no crank, no start at all. So the first thing that you're going to be doing and of course, you got to check to make sure you got fuel in the gas tank and check all your obvious things. This is a way from a technical standpoint to be as accurate as you can in diagnosing this problem and not making a mistake by recommending to a customer that you want to replace a certain part on their vehicle if you don't know that it's actually failed. So this is going to help you in my strategy to show you how to diagnose a crank no start. Now I am going to tell the customer that I'm, I'm going to, um, uh, I'd like to uninstall the car alarm because it is malfunctioning from time to time, uh, with the alarm going off and just kind of intermittently doing that, but it hasn't, hasn't prevented it from starting and it hasn't prevented it from, uh, doing the things I need it to do. Uh, the engine does run when I give it starting fluid. And so this is a quick thing that I can show you. What you see in the screen right now is you see a Noid light. It's a universal Noid light here that I've got connected to the fuel injector. And I'll show you how to do that in, the, in, in one of the next clips. And then I've got a spark plug, just a spare spark plug stuck into the end of one of the, the I think it's cylinder number one or cylinder number two spark plug up here on the driver's side. And then I put a hose clamp here and then I connected it to a just a, a 18 gauge alligator end jumper wire going all the way to ground. So this end right here goes all the way to ground because these threads ground inside the engine and then this is where your positive comes in, your 30, 40,000 volts. So we should see an arc there and we should see this light flashing. What this tells us is it tells us many things. It tells us that it's not the auto shutdown circuit here that Dodges use, Jeep Chrysler Dodge. And it tells us that uh, we have spark, we have uh, fuel injector pulse, and this kind of gives us a bit of, of uh, kind of a, a I guess, a, a foothold or a, a good step forward in our diagnostic to figure out what the problem is. Another thing I want to mention, when you're doing these tests, make sure your test equipment is in good working order because if it's not, then it's going to mislead you. So what I have here is I got the two jumper leads connected to my universal Noid light and I got one into positive or one into negative, one into positive, and then I just touch and make sure that my circuit is good. And then also just make sure you have a good firm connection on here and then to make sure this wire is good, you can uh, take the wire over to a digital multimeter and connect the ends. This is an odd looking uh, test, test leads. I, I found this, this little tweezer test leads. They work really well for checking fuses. And then once you connect it there, and if you just have the straight, the straight probes, you could do, you know, alligator clip those on there. And then just go to continuity. So you can see here, I got three zeros full continuity and they're not touching each other. So it means that this wire is good from the beginning to the end. So you just want to make sure that your test equipment is in good working order before you do these tests so that you can be sure that you are getting the test done and you're doing it properly and, and you're not making any mistakes as far as something so simple like that. And then just make sure your wires are all routed out of the way so they don't get caught in the belt, anything turning. So you just want to have everything over here out of the way. And uh, that should help you immensely when you're doing these tests is to always check your test equipment before you do any tests. So let me go ahead and just show you that real quick. And you'll see what I do in the next steps to help figure out why this thing won't start. Okay, so... It's good that I set this camera up because I have to actually look at the at the uh, footage to see if I did get spark 
and if I did get fuel injector pulse. I did verify that there is spark and I verified that the fuel injector is receiving a pulse from the PCM. And what I've done here is I've removed the power distribution center fuse block cover and I verified that this is the auto shutdown relay fuse, which is number two. And it's a 30 amp engine control relay ASD auto shutdown. Okay, that's that one right there. And had you not gotten spark, had you not gotten a fuel injector pulse, then with a digital multimeter, and I've got this fuse hooked up here, this 30 amp fuse, and just ignore this resistance because this resistance, it's set on resistance here, is in my test leads. So a, a way I like to check fuses is I like to check for continuity for when I'm just doing a quick check. So with this particular Craftsman digital multimeter, it makes a humming noise when I have full continuity, meaning three zeros across the board or in continuity three zeros. It just means that this fuse is not blown. And so that would be the next thing that you would check is you would check this fuse here. And if this fuse was good, then you would go to the auto shutdown relay. So if you look on here, it says 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. And then if you look over here, it says that 56 is a spare. And then it says that the next one to it is an engine control auto shutdown relay and fuel pump note is number 58 right next to it. So auto shutdown relay, fuel pump. And one thing that you can do is that you can grab one of these same part number relays from some other slot and stick it in there. And if the fuse is good and you still don't have spark and you still don't have injector pulse, then you might have another issue. You might have some burned up wires or you might have some other fuses that could be interfering. Whenever I check fuses on a car, I check all of them. Under the hood, in the cab, in the rear of the car, if there's three power distribution centers, I check every single fuse on the car. And then with a relay tester, you can also check every single relay related to your circuit that you're having a failure with. Okay. So in the next clip, I'm going to go to uh, the wiring for the fuel pump to see if I'm getting positive power, positive and ground rather, but I want to look for that positive signal coming from the PCM using my power probe that I've already got connected here. And that's going to tell me if I got power going to my fuel pump. And then what that's, what this is going to tell me is that I'm that much closer to figuring out what the problem is. And at that point, I'm going to call it a fuel pump because I can't check the wiring going right to the fuel pump. So the gas tank's got to come down anyway. And I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure it's a bad fuel pump because it does run with starting fluid. One thing I wanted to show you is when you hook up your, your uh, spark plug, you get a hose clamp on it or whatever, or if you have big alligator uh, uh, ends here that will fit around it, then no problem. You don't need to do that. With the Noid light I hooked up, I just used two little jumper wires, one for positive, one for negative, and then two T-pins. Okay, that aren't touching each other that go right into whatever accessible fuel injector. If you if you look closely, you'll see that the uh, you'll see the wire and then you'll see the open end. If I can I don't I don't see it on camera right there. Back there where my finger is pointing is the fuel injector, and then this is a connector that goes onto it. So it doesn't matter how you hook it up because the noid light is gonna turn on. It doesn't matter, meaning like how the yellow is on the left and the, and the black is on the right, you can reverse them, it's still gonna work. So I just wanted to show you how that's done to help anybody out trying to figure out how to diagnose. And this, this applies, not every car, Jeep Chrysler Dodge is the only manufacturer that uses the auto shutdown relay system. So not every car is going to be like this. But the reason you're checking all this is because if you if you find a fault in any of these things that I'm that I'm going down the list, then this could be a reason for that you know for the why it's not starting. So what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a ton of things that are not preventing it from starting, which is good. I'm, I I know it's not in theft. I know it's not the auto shutdown relay, which is you know I just it's Jeep Chrysler Dodge's way of doing theft, and I don't know how that circuit works. I, you know, it, it would just be too long of a video to try and get into all that and, and study and research how every single in and out of 
the auto shutdown relay circuit works. However, this tells me a lot. I got fuel injector pulse, I got spark, and I don't have blown fuses, and I don't have any issues, and I and you pull the you could pull the relay out and look for burning or anything melting inside the little you can see here there's nothing here. You just look in there to make sure there's no burnt wiring, smell it. Uh, re take a relay that's got the same part number and the same amount of five pins and plug it in there and do everything you can and then what you're going to do next is you're going to come over here and the next clip I'm going to show you this is just the the most accessible point you see that wire hanging down to where I could get to the fuel pump wiring where there's a connector that comes from the harness so what you see in this shot is my Power Probe 3, and I got this red test lead going up to the connector, and I'll show that right after I show you this, and show you kind of what I did to get to this point that I'm at now. And so this red jumper wire goes to a T-pin straight up into the harness connector where the fuel pump feed wire, it's the positive power that feeds the fuel pump, and this, the tip is touching and then this, this is connected to positive and negative on the battery. And so it tells me at rest, it's ground. And so it's getting the ground going through the pump and making it back to this point. So once I, once the pump is able to turn on or the circuit is live, I'm going to be getting a positive, um, the light here will turn red and then so we'll, I'll have an audible thing here. Two things you want to remember when you do this cranking to check your fuel pump wiring circuit integrity is that you want to check it with the key on to make sure you're getting your prime signal which is a couple seconds of getting positive power and then once the engine detects one excuse me once the PCM detects that the engine isn't running because of the crankshaft or the camshaft position sensor not not sending a signal to it a feedback then the computer is going to shut off that um, that momentary um, uh, power to turn on the fuel pump so the, it, you could also call it the prime. I've heard it called that before, but it's just a momentary power until either it's running. Once it's running, that power will stay on. And then so another thing, too, is that you want to make sure that when you when you turn the power on to verify that you get your prime, you get a few seconds of positive power on that wire. You want to also make sure that as you're cranking, you continue to get positive power and it doesn't get interrupted. So I'll do this here so you can hear it and see it. And so this is ground right now. And so as you saw there, I was getting my positive power the whole time as I was cranking. It was never interrupted. Okay, so every car is going to be different as far as electronics go and wiring and where stuff's located. But in this case, right behind the driver's side front wheel, there's two harness connectors. And the one you're looking for is this one here. And it's got a wire that's a pretty thick, robust wire. I didn't pull out a wiring diagram. I just got lucky and found the circuit right away because you're going to look for the two heavy duty wires so in this one here you can see my alligator end here I just back probed in the connector and so it's a pink wire is your positive in this black with kind of a pink stripe that's your ground so if I'm not mistaken um, these smaller wires here are for the other parts of the circuit or for the for the fuel level and all that so I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is a circuit. This is a steady ground right here all the time, and then this is pulsed on by the computer when you're in crank mode or when you turn the key on for the momentary few seconds, I get a prime of, of uh, power here to the fuel pump. So that's how I got that connected. And then, as I said, I just took the this end here to that T-pin and the other end to the tip of my power probe, as you can see there. And so I, I also verified there's a good ground on that connector there. So I do know that it's got a good ground. And, and then I also force fed it power because the thing with the power probe, and this is another way you can use a power probe is you can send power and then you can use this little, uh, this little um, zip tie to continue to give yourself power on the circuit. And hold it there and then you could actually if you had a, a failure in the circuit fuel pump circuit you could actually just turn this on and 
slide that over and it will just continue to give power and you can just run your fuel pump there. So that's another good use for a Power Probe 3. Had you not gotten power to that um, pink wire that I showed you underneath the harness there on the driver's side uh, behind the wheel there, you would go here to 17 is fuel pump, 20 amp, and which is right here, and I've already pulled it out. And I've got it right here, and then I'm going to come over here to my makeshift bench test area, and then just uh, touch here. So, as you can see, I've got full continuity, and you can also look in there and see that it's a good fuse, because it's continuous all the way around, like a horseshoe. So, and then you can also check the relay as well doing the same thing, taking the same part number with the same amount of pins and taking the fuel pump out and then swapping it. And if you get your power back, then you found your problem. Look for burned ends, look for bent pins, look for anything smell around, for anything burnt in there. That'll be, that'll give you a lot of information as to what the heck is going on with why it won't start. And then another thing that I wanted to show as well is that it's always just good practice that whenever you have a, a crank no start is that you look for any type of a security light or like a picture of a key with a, a line drawn through it on some Japanese models. And so while cranking, you're just going to look for the uh, anything that says security, anything that shows theft or anything like that. So in this case, I'm looking at these lights. I don't see a theft light. But it uh, doesn't mean that it's not there. Um, but anyway, so you could just go and, and just do this and look for anything while you're cranking that's flashing theft or something like that. And I didn't see anything, so to me that's good. That's just another step that maybe could help somebody um, and just put it on your checklist of things to check when you're looking for a problem for a crank no start. One more thing I wanted to add is that sometimes in the far left of the dash, not inside the instrument cluster, you'll see a theft light that is a part of the factory, okay, that came with the car when it was new, not an add-on aftermarket thing. So always look around. I, 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 you know, I don't have a photographic memory, and I work on all different years, makes, and models of cars, so I really don't know. But I have seen them over here. I have seen them over here, over here. So, or in the dash somewhere. So just make sure you're looking for all that stuff and uh, that way you won't make a mistake by not looking to the far left, to the, you know, uh, or the far right of the dash into the far left of the dash for theft light, security light, or something like that. Cause they're gonna say security with a little light bulb or it's gonna be like a square or something like that with a smooth finish on it that's gonna say security or something like that. So, or theft. So just make sure you look for that as well. So I also wanted to mention that with auto repair and diagnostics, you can never go too far. You can always go a step further, and if you really wanted to go a step further, this is what you could do. So you hook up a test light bulb to those two wires, a positive and negative, which is your circuit for your fuel pump, and this headlight bulb is going to draw quite a few amps of power. So if there's any issues in the positive or the ground side of this circuit going to the fuel pump, this headlight bulb is going to be extremely dim while cranking and while just turning the key on for a prime. So what this tells us is that when I turn the key on, we got a bright headlight, okay? What this tells me is that the circuit is good, and of course it, it might be a little bit dim while cranking, but you just want to make sure it's bright while cranking. I already charged up this battery to 12.6 volts, so I know this battery is good because I've been doing a lot of tests here. And so when you go to crank it, you see that this headlight bulb is super bright. So what this tells me is that the integrity of the circuit is good, and it also gives me more uh, confidence and proof that the fuel pump is bad because it did not turn on, and that the circuit is in good, healthy condition, and, and the uh, ground side and positive side circuits are not shorted to each other in any way, and there's no corrosion in this circuit. So this tells me a whole lot about this uh, circuit and the integrity of it. One more thing I'd like to add to make this video a little bit better is that with as much information as I can remember to give these put in these videos while I'm making them. When I make videos, I do kind of get a little bit scatterbrained, but I, I try to make sure I hit all the the uh, main 
bullets and, and, and make sure I get as much information out as I can. If you don't find any issues with any of these circuits when you're using the either the headlight bulb or a test light or any of these, these uh, uh, diagnostic uh, test equipment that I had hooked up, then that means that there are no issues with the electronics. That means that there's no issues of any kind, so don't, you don't need to be looking for blown fuses or bad relays. What you need to do is you need to basically think about that and do some critical thinking. Hey, if this works, if that works, if this works, if that works, what's left? So the only thing that's left is a fuel pump because we do not have fuel pressure and the fuel pump is not turning on. You would hear it turn on and it would have turned on and the engine would have started running if the fuel pump was working. And because we do know that it's got power, we do know that we have fuel injector pulse, we know that we have spark. I'm pretty reasonably sure that we have very good compression and I already know this starts because I took this hose off the brake booster and put a little bit of... Uh, starting fluid in there and then make sure you have a fire extinguisher present when you do this and then I just sprayed a, like a two second blast in here plugged it back on removed the starting fluid from underneath the hood and then I had my fire extinguisher nearby and I went in and started up and it ran for about three or four seconds and turned off so that is how I knew that I was dealing with a faulty fuel pump so this is how you do it this is how you're going to try to start an engine that you suspect has no other issues besides the fuel pump or you if you want to just verify that it's a fuel delivery problem this is a quick way that you can do that so you need to do this safely okay so you need to have a fire extinguisher and then you could use carburetor parts cleaner brake parts cleaner or starting fluid you need to make sure that you have a fan going and have ventilation because sometimes the engine will start if it's a if it's a bad fuel pump so this is a quick way to find out and give you your answer. So once you get that the brake booster hose disconnected, which is the easiest way to get into the system where there's going to be vacuum, and then just get your uh, can in there and just do about a two-second blast. That's enough. And then take this and get it out of the way. You don't want it underneath the hood. And just leave our fire extinguisher here. Probably shouldn't fall over, but just make sure it's in a good, stable spot. And then reconnect your hose. Make sure that everything's back together, nothing in the way of the belts of the engine starting. This can start and run because this is a, a, a speed density engine ma uh, MAP sensor, it doesn't have a mass airflow sensor. So I just had this boot off so I could check fuel pressure and uh, that's why that's off. So just ignore that. So come over here and set your e-brake, make sure it's in park and then try to start it. So I probably didn't give it enough, so I'm going to give it one more shot. Be very careful. This is dangerous. So if you're going to do multiple times and this thing does start, you know, I mean, there could be a fire or an explosion. That's why you have a fire extinguisher. So I just gave it another shot of carburetor parts cleaner. There we go. That did it. So you can see here it's running and it's going to turn off because it's not continuing to get fuel. So I've already ruled out everything. The only thing that is a possible problem is the fuel pump is dead and it refuses to turn on. You did a good job. Subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching. See you next time.